We're gonna spatchcock it. What's up, barbecue fans? Welcome back to the patio. My name's Jake. You're watching Roman Cook. Today on the channel, we're doing something a little different. We've got this chicken. We're gonna spatchcock it, and we're gonna smoke it, and then we're gonna grill it. So let me show you how we're gonna do this. First, this is just a air-chilled organic chicken picked up at Whole Foods. You can use whatever chicken you want. For reference, this guy is four and a half pounds. Now, if you can find air-chilled, big fan. Simple reason is less moisture. Moisture is the enemy when it comes to smoking chicken. If you can't get yourself an air chilled chicken, what you might want to do is take it out of the package and you can salt brine it overnight. We'll do that another time, but essentially you're just salting it, throwing it in a rack and put it in the fridge. We are going to do a partial salt brine on this guy, but before we get into that, we're going to split this open. We are going to spatchcock it, so get yourself a pair of poultry shears. And really what we're doing here is we're looking for this backbone and we're just going to cut right around it. Super simple. You can do it with a knife. Either way works well. I like poultry scissors myself. Poultry shears, whatever you want to call them. And now uh, you can save this for a stock. And what we're going to do here is we're going to open this guy up. There's a couple different advantages to spatchcocking a chicken. Number one, it's going to cook a little quicker and it's also going to cook a little bit more evenly. Number two, we can get some seasoning on the inside. I'm just going to trim some fat here. And I am going to trim a little bit of fat here as well. Now, a couple things here. You can leave this as it sits, flip it over, squish it. You're going to break the wishbone here. I am going to take a knife here and get this out. And we're going to go a little bit further than that. Difficult to show you on the camera, but essentially what you're going to do is you're going to find this bone. We're going to go right under it. I'm just going to cut around it. We'll keep, and really we're just trying to keep as much meat in the bird as possible. And it does go back in there a little deep. So I'm just basically feeling around the bone. There's one side, there's the other side, just like that comes out and now this will lay a little bit flatter but in this case I'm going to take this even a step further but you could leave it like this you see how it flattens right out nicely now all right now you can get some seasoning on the outside you get some seasoning on the inside however I'm going to take out this center piece in here right along the breast and the reason for that is is that I'm going to cut this in half and this will just make it easier so again, you're looking for this cartilage here and you're going to go around it with your knife and then you can get a hold of it. I trimmed it a little, went a little thin and you'll know this bone because as you're slicing turkey or chicken along that uh, breast side, you're always coming down the side and around the bone. So we're just kind of trying to take that out a little bit and it'll make more sense why I'm doing this later on in the video. You just got to kind of feel your, your, your way around with your knife. You can even go up and underneath these bones, as you see I've done here. The more bone you remove now, the easier it is to cut later. And just like that, now we've got everything out and now it really lays flat and you could go a step further there's some bone in here we are not going to do that today but you could take out some of the thigh bone there if you wanted to but as you can see now with no work at all we can lay nice and flat let's clean up the skin a little bit and now we're going to season this guy up today we're using Yoder's chicken rub. This is sweet with a little bit of a kick near the end. So if you're like me and you're a little bit of a wimp, don't go too crazy with it, but it is some good stuff. I tried it on some chicken breast recently. Get all the sides here. Don't forget to lift up the legs. 
get underneath your arms here. And because we went through all this work, we can also flip this over and do the underside a little bit. And now we've got a good amount of seizing all the way around. And if you really wanted to go extra far, you could actually see how the skin's pulling back here. I could work my finger under here. We could pull back the skin and we could season under there. We're gonna do that on another, another chicken video. This is gonna be fine for what I'm trying to achieve today. The reason why we're trying to separate this out is because I'm actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut right down here and we're gonna separate this because when it comes down to the final part of this cook, I want a little bit of area to work with. So and now we've got two pieces to work with. Cut the skin a little tight, so we'll give this a little tug. Give that a little seasoning there. And what we're gonna do, you might notice, the yogurt's not running yet. We're gonna throw this on like a cookie cooling rack. If you don't have one of those, you definitely want one. That allows the air to circulate. You're gonna use that a lot in barbecue. It's just nice uh, to be able to put your meat up on a rack and let that air circulate, especially if you get into dry brining uh, lots of meat. So what we're gonna do, throw this in the fridge. We want it nice and cold for what we're trying to achieve today. I'll bring it back in about 45 minutes. We're gonna turn this guy up to 220 degrees, get some smoke in it and then I'll bring you back for the next step. So today we're using Bear Mountain's Gourmet Barbecue Pellets. It says it's a balanced, sweet, smoky flavor. I would imagine it might have a little bit of cherry in it or some pecan for that sweet. But this would be great for chicken. All right, so we're gonna set our Yoder at 225. We wanna get some smoke flavor into this guy. We're gonna let this get up to temperature and let this heat up until we see some smoke. While we're waiting for that, I'm sure you're probably noticing this new shirt. This is one of the new pieces of merch I've got for the channel. Whole bunch of different designs. The one thing I wanna address right off the bat, you'll see they're $23.99. I've spent a year and a half testing different shirts. I talked to you guys about quality grills, quality meat. I'm not gonna sell you a $15 shirt that's not gonna last. So I've been washing, wearing, trying them out to make sure that I could get a very good quality shirt, but not, you know, be extremely expensive. Not that $23.99 is cheap, but let me be straightforward. I make five bucks on the shirts. I'm not making a ton of them. I've got a whole bunch of designs. I released the first six or seven last week. They're below the video. If you want to get one of these, there's a whole bunch of them. That helps support the channel if you do. Thanks in advance. Now that we're started up, we're gonna give this guy a good 30 minutes to preheat. I wanna make sure the chicken's nice and cold and that'll just allow that seasoning to penetrate in the meat a little deeper. So it's been about 45 minutes. Chicken has been chilling out in the fridge. As you can see, it's looking delicious. Here's the cooling rack I'm talking about, right? Just, just a wire rack so we get the meat off the tray, allow that air to circulate around it. But as you can see, the chicken is looking great. We've had lots of time for the seasoning to penetrate into the chicken, get some flavoring into the meat. It's looking great. We've drawn out a little bit of moisture. If you had some time, this would actually dry up even more, but don't worry. We're gonna deal with that later on. So now all we have to do is get this on the pit. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put this on the top rack Make sure we get into all that smoky goodness. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put the thigh and the leg closer to the stack because we know that's a hotter spot. But I'll put them both up here and I'm gonna wait about 20, 25, maybe 30 minutes. And then what we'll do is I'll just rotate these so we get some even cooking. Now, all we're trying to do here is we're trying to get some smoke flavor in there. We are gonna cook a little bit, but we're not gonna finish them on the top rack. I'll bring you back when we get to that step. So we've been going on for about 28 minutes. Let's have a look here. All right, so our thigh that's closest to the stack is reading 106. So we know we've got some time to go. So what we're gonna do here, I'm just gonna rotate these real quick. Skin's getting a little crunchy near the end out of curiosity. We're pretty close. 
one of six, we're right on the money. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let these guys go probably another 20 minutes or so. I'll bring you out, we'll check the temperatures. Really what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get them up to about a buck 40, 145, somewhere in there, and then we'll get on the next steps. It's been another 45 minutes. Let's see where we're at. But 142 in that thigh, 143 in the breast. Same thing here, 141, 142, 141. So we're right where we want to be. Let me pull this off real quick. Whew, that's warm. So what you can see here is we've got some great color. The skin is dry, but it's going to be a little rubbery, which is exactly where we want it. So what are we going to do now? Now what we're doing is we're going to open up our firebox. And you can just push the diffuser plate over on the other side, that's fine. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna dial this thing up to 500 degrees. So that's gonna drop some pellets in here, gonna burn off what's left of our chicken. So, we're gonna get the yoder up the temp, give it a little bit to get up to 500 degrees, 450, somewhere in there. And while we're waiting for that to happen, we'll take our chicken inside and I'll bring you back when we're up the temp. So it's been five minutes and 30 seconds. We're at 531. It does not take a lot of time. As you can see, I did add a heat glove because you know this channel is all about safety. <laughs> Anyhow, what we're going to do here, here's my plan of attack. Now, I have never done this before, but on my channel, there's no practice runs. I get an idea and I go with it. But here's the premise of this, right? If I'm over here, I'm going to be directly over the fire and I'm going to be searing at really high temps. We got 25, 20 degrees to go or so. I want to get some crispness on the skin. I can cook some underneath, but if I put it down lower, it's going to sear in like two minutes. So I don't want to do that. We're going to try putting it up high. That's going to give it time to be away from the fire, but we're still gonna get a lot of that heat. So we're gonna cr crisp up our skin and we're gonna monitor this closely and see how it works. In my mind, it sounds delicious. We'll find out a little bit if I was correct. A minute and a half in, let's see how we look. Oh, we're getting, we're getting some color already. Quicker than I thought. Rotate this around. Now I've got this guy up because we're gonna try and keep bringing up the temperature. We want our chicken to be done close to each other, but this is actually, even up top, it's cooking pretty darn quick. Gonna keep an eye on it, maybe another minute. And then what I'll do is I'll bring over the other one. We'll get our skin crisp up and then we'll do the bottom and we'll monitor our temps. There's another minute, it's sizzling. I think we're pretty good. We're gonna give this one a chance to rest a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this off the side Skin's pretty crispy. However, we know that the heat's gonna come up and out the smokestack. So I'm gonna take care of that fast moving hot air to help continue to crisp this up. We're gonna give this another minute and a half and we'll have a look. Been another minute and a half. Let's see how we're looking. I'm liking that. I'm gonna just kind of rotate a little bit. See if I can get some of the edge of that. Look, you can even see it boiling here. We're hot. That one got a little crisper. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to crisp up the bottom. Actually, we'll switch sides. Take a quick temp reading here. 147. So we haven't come up a lot in temp yet. Just getting the sear we're looking for. So I'm going to let the bottom go for maybe a minute. We don't want to get the bottom too crispy. Then I'm going to bring the other one over there. And then what I'm going to do is just let them sit off away from the fire until they're about 160 and I'll bring you back we're gonna pull them off one minute down let's have a look at the bottom oh yeah looking delicious exactly what we want let's bring this guy over here and just get a little bit of color on the bottom of that that's done I'll give this a minute and then we'll bring it off to the right 
and then I'll bring you back when they're done. Now we'll bring this guy back over off the heat. As you can see, we got some great color in there. Looking good. Let's just let them get up to temp. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna dial this down a little bit. It's been about another 10 minutes. These guys are done. We're sitting right around 160 everywhere, 163. What I did is I moved the breast, sorry, the thigh over the fire again one more time just to get it a little higher. So it's about 168. There you go. Skin feels nice and crispy. Now one of the things about storing it on a wire rack like this, right? We gotta let it sit there for probably 15 minutes or so. Let it come down temperature a little bit. But this will make sure that the bottom doesn't get soggy at all. You can see we've got some good color there. Same on this one, it is hot. I'll tell you what, even with the cotton gloves underneath the nitro gloves, it was still a little hot moving around the fire. But you can see, hopefully you can hear that. I mean, this is some crispy skin. We're gonna be, I think we're gonna be eating some good chicken. Now the one thing, like I said, like I haven't tried that, but I was surprised even when we were that far away, how quickly this crisped up. So uh, yeah, I'll be trying this again. Let me sit this down for 15 minutes, let them rest, and then we'll give it a taste test. Been about 14 minutes. I can't wait any longer. Let's try this out. Let's bring this guy over here. The nice thing there is right away we can cut it into four nice pieces depending on what you're looking to eat. Now I am a breast guy myself, so we're gonna go right there. Now that's gonna come across. Skin's nice and crunchy. I am liking that. The brush is great. Let me try a little bit of that thigh. Nice and juicy. Perfect. Really happy with this. I, I mean, it's juicy, got lots of flavor. The Yoder seasoning on point, not too, not too hot. You know, like when I look at these things and I'm like, smoky sweet with a bang scares me. <laughs> you guys know I'm not into hot stuff, uh, but we used a fair amount and it's, it's not over the top at all. In fact, I'm really enjoying this skin so much that I need to have a little bit more. Nice and crispy, exactly what I'm looking for. I was really impressed with how much char we got on the chicken when we're up on the top shelf, so I will be doing that again. Great lesson learned for me and you. Highly recommend you give it a shot. I got nothing to complain about this one. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, why not? Click that link below. If you want one of these shirts, look lower. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you soon.